my sister Jessie, who's our, the youngest of four in our family, came up to me. We were visiting my mom. She came up to me and she said, I can't stop thinking about killing myself. I need help. And everything kind of jerked into, into place for me. I mean, and I, we got her help and um, she was pro finally properly diagnosed when she was 50 years old. So a lot of water had gone under that bridge. She had fallen through the cracks of our family. Um, and the, the thing that is amazing to me, um, and therefore I, I, you know, I, I think what happens in my family probably happens in millions of other families. We just had no vocabulary for mental illness, even though my dad was a doctor. Um, so, and then, Jesse's son, Kalen, had actually been diagnosed with schizo, schizophrenia, and he had been in a hospital for two years, and it still didn't kind of click in, you know? It's just so foreign, or it just was something that we didn't talk about. But when Jess uh, came up to me, and then later when both Kalen and Jesse said, can you, with, with your you know, high-profile life, do help in some way, I said, well, this has been under my nose for a disturbingly long time. And it was, I made the decision that this is what I would do with my, the time for nonprofit. One in six adults has a mental illness. And we face a stigma that can be as painful as the disease itself. Change a mind about mental illness. And you can change a life. For much of your life, you've been living in the public eye. What was it like, though, for you to take this very personal family issue, this secret um, that, that some people may have viewed it as, and, and bring that to life and take your sister and your nephew along with you in that journey? When I decided that the messaging is probably where I could be most useful, my first call was to Jesse and also to Kaylin saying, I'm not going to do it without you. And so it's up to you. Do you... Are you willing to basically reveal that you live with, with a mental illness on a national, in a national campaign? And they, without hesitation, said yes. And when you put yourself in their shoes, that is a huge act of courage. And I think that's what has really been effective in bringing change to mind because basically the message is so authentic. It's, it's about a, a real family and people having the courage. I don't like to appear publicly without either Jesse or Kaylin, you know, because we're so celebrity crazy in this country. Um, it's because it's really not about my celebrity, even though it does help to, to have people say, well, she was in Fatal Attraction, so maybe she might have something interesting to say. <laughs> But it's Jesse and Kaylin that really, really blow people away. I'm Kaylin, and I've been living with schizophrenia for 11 years. People like me with a diagnosis of mental illness face stigma and discrimination every day. Luckily, I've had the support of family and friends to help me live a full life. It's time to talk about mental illness. Start the conversation. Does that surprise you that when talking about mental illness and such an important issue that people constantly go back to your role in Fatal Attraction and Hollywood's perpetuating this, this myth about mental illness or dramatizing in a way that isn't accurate. That's really interesting. I, I, because when I, when I was researching Fatal Attraction, which was in the 80s, a possible mental disorder for Alex Forrest never came up. And that, to me, is extraordinary now, because it would be the first thing that I think of. I just want to be a part of your life. Oh, this is the way you do it, huh? Showing up at my apartment! Well, what am I supposed to do? You won't answer my calls. You change your number. I mean, I'm not going to be ignored, Dan. But in fact, when I am doing a character who has maybe some, some kind of different kind of behavior, I always think, well, you know, is there possibly something going on that might be a mental disorder? Because it's so prevalent and it can inform behavior even though people might not know about it. What's that like for you to have built your career in the entertainment industry, incredibly high profile, and you have this extraordinary influence to unlock lock a dialogue where strangers are coming up to you and sharing their personal story? Had you ever experienced anything like that before? And what's that like for you personally to have 
such influence often in unexpected ways or to a scale you may not have imagined? There is a strange phenomenon that happens when you're in movies or television or stage or all three that somehow it gives you a credibility with people that you know you wouldn't have had without it. Um, they, I, I, often people will come up to me and say, are you who you, I think you are? <laughs> are you who I think you are? Um, it, always, it always makes me feel very shy and embarrassed because I don't quite, and you, you don't want to say, well, you know, who do you, who do you think I am? <laughs> but um, so I take that with a grain of salt because I think a lot of times um, you know, people don't really know you, but I respect the fact that they, I suppose it's my choices, the things that I've done as an actress that make them feel they can trust me and that, and that, and that um, maybe I, I speak authentically. So it's very important to me um, to stay totally authentic. If you were to write a letter to yourself of 20 years ago, what would have been the one piece of advice you would have given yourself at that moment in time? 20 years ago. Well, don't lose track of your family. Family is so important, and we were so dispersed for so long. We've, uh, we've never been a family that has been near each other, you know, ever. Um, so, but now I think we're closer than we've ever been, and it, it makes me happy. It also makes me wish that there were times earlier that we could have really, really spent together. <laughs>